Hey YouTube, this is Troy. Um, got a couple, this is kind of a response video to a couple comments around people's or, or individuals uh, asking about, you know, what do I use my controller for? Do I like it, etc. Um, so I'm going to do just a really quick review or at least, you know, kind of glance over how I use it. Um, and uh, and then I'm also going to talk a little bit about the Apex controller and, and my thoughts on that as well. So um, what you're looking at right here is if you have the net module, so I have the Reefkeeper Elite. Um, and I'll, I'll quickly go over the components and I'll have them set up underneath the stand if you haven't seen some of my videos. Um, I, have a, I have a detailed video on how I mounted everything and whatnot, so um, I probably won't spend a ton of time on that. But... Uh, they have this website. Um, you can obviously, if you you hook your internet up, um, your your home network up to your the net module, you can gain access to this website within your home network. Takes a little work um, to make it accessible outside of your home network. Um, there's, to be honest with you, I think the documentation that they have is kind of crappy, but. Um, there's a lot of, there's a couple different YouTube videos out there actually how to set it up and there's some forums to talk about as well. If you're, if you're into home networking and you know, you know, you're pretty savvy there, it, it won't be that big of a deal. If you aren't, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, I don't know if the Apex is any better. Um, the one thing with their portal is from the Apex standpoint is I know it has uh, a video cam capability. So basically, when you go to the home page, which is what you're seeing here from uh, the Reef Keeper, um, they also have uh, where you can hook a video camera up, and so you can have live streaming of your tank inside their portal. But you know, basically, from this portal, if I go to one of my PC4s, you can do basic functions from here, basically on-off functions. Um, nothing crazy. It'll hopefully pop up here in a second. Um, so basically you can see my various channels that I have here. It'll say what kind of function it is. And then if I edit the function, I can uh, turn things on or off. Up above, it basically shows the state of what everything's at. Um, the other thing that it has logging and RSS, which is basically RSS is your remote, your remote capability. If you're going to enable manipulation of your on or off settings from your your mobile device, so in this case, I don't know how well it's going to pick up. Probably really crappy. There's that RSS enabled, the checkbox, and then down below, what you end up doing is configuring a bunch of ports on your uh, PC4 or on your SL1 that you either want reported, like I have temperature and pH reported, and then on the PC4 is I have a lot of the bits that I, or at least a lot of the channels that I want to be able to control from my mobile app, or from my mobile apps or from my iPhone um, uh, configured on there. And, and their manual talks about that, and it's pretty simple to set it up. So, I mean, for the most part, the website and and getting the mobile app to run is pretty straightforward as long as you're pretty savvy on how to externally expose your one of your IPs. So that's where if you're not all that savvy with uh, home networking, it can kind of be a bitch. But um, so their website, you know, it's it's functional. You know, I wouldn't say I'm like blown away by it, but it's functional. Um, I think Apex's website's probably a little bit nicer looking. And like I said, it also has the, uh, the video integration, so you can have uh, live streaming of uh, if you have a video camera set up. So um, The other app... Oh, sorry. Apologize for the camera work. Um, here is... I don't ever get on my PC. Or my PC. I, I love Apple, but every once in a while i got to hop on the Dell because of this application and, and I do most of my off and on uh, turning of you know if I'm doing maintenance on the skimmer pretty much use my iPhone to turn everything on or off but if I do any advanced programming boom you gotta go here this is kind of their desktop application 
I got it on my Dell. It's wired via a little USB to their to their bus line, which connects to one of their components, and I'll kind of go over that here in a second. But um, you know, basically here you can see all your bits. I don't do any major advanced programming. I'll show you a couple instances where I where I have it, and it's mostly around the refugium light, which I want turned off or on, and the and the 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 uh, temperature, the the uh, heater, but. Typically, I turned it on so I could go under the tank stand and actually show you there's a little more light under there, but typically this is set to auto. And then all those settings down below become enabled. So the functions, there's a bunch of preset functions. In this case, I just have a, a light other option. And it has a start, end time, the days you want the thing to run, what the default is. So if I was to pick, well, I can do it and just not save it so the light stays on. Because right now, typically my refugium light's off then all those things become enabled. Um, you know, I'm running an MP4, or a couple mp MP4, so the drivers pretty much do the business there. I'm running Radeon, so they have their own program. Uh, you know, so, so I really don't have to worry about turning different lights on or off throughout the day. Obviously, this controller is more than capable of doing that. Uh, you know, here, here's the heater is the other option. So see there it's auto the functions heater I want to key off of the SL1 temperature probe and then basically you know I set the temperature at 78.5 it goes below that fires the heater up above it uh, turns the thing off if I look at the SL basically I don't use either one of the switches but you could uh, you know if you wanted to use it for an auto top off kind of a built-in auto top off or you know I don't know what else but I, I just don't have a use for it. Um, you know, it has basically your current temperature, your pH. Um, and so, you know, it's it's functional. You know, it's, it's not hard to install. I didn't think it was hard to install. It's pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward to, to set it up. It's probably good because the documentation is, is okay. I'll give it an okay. Um, if I give you a just quick tour of how I have everything set up underneath the tank. Alright, so there's my SL1. Got the pH probe and temperature probe going down into the tank. I hope well I can get to the net module, which is up there. So I got a network cable going out. And then I got one wicked awesome camera work. One PC4 up there. Two stacked right there. And basically, I have a power cable there, which uh, is bringing the main power underneath the stand, and is powering all three PC4s. And I just have a, a little light switch here that uh, has my a light connected to it. I think the fan might be plugged in up there too. A little cheese ball fan, but um, you know. Connection-wise, you just mount everything up. They give you a, bu a bunch of these little bus cables. You can see on the top, one going in, one going out on the top there. They're just, you know, what you consider like typical old-school telephone cable for your, you know, your home phone, uh, your landline. So um, nothing exciting, but so, you know, the one thing that I'll, I'll say, if I had to do it all over again, I'd be hard-pressed not to go with the Apex controller. And the reason why is mostly the bits that I've bought for this particular tank. The MP40, Apex has got a, a module that you can control the MP40. So you can put the thing in a night mode, you can put the thing in, I have short post mode, so you can basically have a lot more control over your MP40 right from your controller. Your controller basically directly talks to your MP40. Um, like I said, their, their applications you use to interact with their controller just seem to be a little bit more polished, a little bit more up to date. Um, they do have video capability with their website, so you can have a you know live stream feed of video for your for your fish tank. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, I think from a connection standpoint and just the general usability and does the thing actually do what it's advertised, I think they're on, I think they're on par with one another. I think the biggest difference between the two 
is really the application that's used to interface. Their mobile app pretty much does the same thing this mobile app does. You turn things on, you turn things off. You know, they're, like I said, it's mostly just the website. Some of the modules, they seem to be a little bit more up, uh, you know, up to date with the various modules that they're releasing for some of the more mainstream components that people want to put on their tank. So, from that standpoint, you know, I don't think you can go wrong with either. I'm not going to like go out tomorrow and swap out my Digital Aquatics Reef Keeper Elite because of the fact they got video streaming in their Apex web port website. So, this is something that, you know, if, if I'm shopping a year or two down the road, yeah, I might switch it out. You know, I, obviously, if Digital Aquatics steps up the game and kind of brings something to the plate that, that that's definitely in par with Apex, then. You know, that's something that I'll do as well. When I bought this, they didn't have those two bits that I was referring to. You know, the website wasn't at the state it was in right now with the, with the video feed, and they didn't have the controller for the MP40. So, um, but, you know, so, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. But all in all, I'm very satisfied with the controller. I think it does great. I haven't had any problems, haven't had any shutdowns, any glitches, any hiccups. Uh, works great from the web, you know, response time is, I'd say, average, you know, if you're doing any kind of transaction over the web, you're sh shutting things off or shutting things on, it takes a few seconds for the thing to refresh and actually push the command, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, that's enough, this is quickly becoming a 12 minute video and I'm rambling on, so uh, I'll do a couple other uh, videos on some of, you know, my skimmer and, you know, whatever else I got going on if you guys are interested. I'm going to do a water change this coming weekend, so I'll probably do, some, uh, you know, something on my my plumbing that I have under here and how I do my water changes. Um, other than that, uh, that's enough for this particular video. All right, later.